Let us move on to our next presenter this afternoon. She is a Master of Arts in History candidate at the University of San Carlos. He, gra he graduated from Christ the King Missionary Seminary. I, she graduated from Christ the King Mission Seminary with a degree in philosophy and also had, a, had also taken AB Theology and MA in Theology from the Seminario Mayor de San Carlos. He was, he was a former philosophy teacher at Collegium Societatis Angeli Pasi Seminary for five years. At the Lisay City College, he taught history subjects from 2018 until the present. In 2020, he was a member of the Talisay City College Cultural Affairs Office. In 2021, he embarked on the research of the local history of the city of Talisay. A round of applause for Ms. Marben, uh, for Mr. Jo for Mr. Marben S. Bascon. A round of applause, please. Uh, once again, may yung to kana tong tanan. May to. Okay, good afternoon. So, um, by the way, my presentation is more focused on the historical backgrounds of the Concilva. At the same time, we're trying to retrace the history of the sugar industry in Talisay. So, possibly, I should be writing about the history of sugar industry in Talisay. But I found out that when I had my interview with one of the descendants of the Concilva makers in Talisay, according to her, uh, she said that they are, I mean, they are in business. I mean, they are trying to, they are trying to realize the, the business of Concilva because according to them, it was one of the heirlooms of their families, their, their families, the Villavers, that can be traced back during, can be traced back during the time of the Spanish period. Okay, so are you familiar with, are you familiar with the uh, problem, are you familiar with the problems way back four months ago that there was a shortage when it comes to sugar, in, when it comes to sugar, that even the Coca-Cola company in, in, in the Philippines, ilang gipang close ang ilang mga planta because there was a sugar shortage. So as part of our, as part of the Talisay City, uh, as part of the Talisay City College um, Cultural Affairs Office, we are trying to portray to the Talisay known that uh, once in the lifetime of Talisay's history, sugar was never been a problem. Or even in the history of Cebu, sugar was never been a problem because sugar was one of the important source of business during the Spanish period. So I'm going to discuss on the Conselba, the sweet remains of the sugar industry in Talisay. Sometimes Conselba can be spelled or called as conserva, or if you are, if you are from Iloilo, sometimes conserva can be, can be called as panagsugbo. Oh, pinasugbo, sorry. Pinasugbo. Okay, so I'm going to discuss, to discuss the Talisay and Friars Land, sugar cane and, sugar cane and banana shendas, the sugar industry during the American period, the destruction of Talisay's agricultural lands in the Second World War, and how conserva became one of the favorite a uh, food snack of the Talisay nun during the Spanish period with the coming of the Americans and sad to say, during, uh, sad to say during the 1950s, wala ala dyan siya. It was totally blocked out from the, gastro, uh, the history of the gastronomy of Talisay. So this is one of the example. Um, I began to write about the history of Talisay when I was in the seminary in Christ the King because in Christ the King in, in Quezon City. So most of our professors uh, most of our uh, professors were were professors from the University of Santo Tomas. So at the same time, we were given access to the beautiful archives of the University of Santo Tomas, particularly the, the particularly the ecclesiastical uh, archives of the university. Then there was uh, in that particular section there was wa there was a a document. The document was written in uh, it, it was written in in an old Spanish language, particularly the, paleo, uh, pale, particularly the paleography of the 15th and 16th century. So there's a big difference between the paleography of the 15th and 16th century and the 17th to 20th century Spanish uh, paleography. So I found out there that as early as 1660, Talisay was, Talisay was part of the, was, was part of the Augustinian uh, property. In other words, you try to imagine all of the lands in Talisay and Minglanilla, kay ang Usari Tagia, Kisay Tagia, ang mga Agustinian, kisa man yung mga Agustinian. These are the priests 
who are now the owner of the Basilica de Santo Nino. Ingana kada ko ilang yuta, aside from aside from Minglanilia and Talisay, they also own the lands in Banilad, Mabolo, and Talamban. So ingana kada to, kada to mga pari. Okay. So, historically, Talisay is one of the important pre-Spanish coastal settlements in Cebu, as what mentioned by Sir Tormis. During the Spanish period, the Augustinian order acquired all the lands outside the boundaries of the Pueblo de Naturales and the Parroquia of San Nicolas as early as 17th century through a series of donations. So you try to imagine that Talisay, starting from 17th century, I mean, starting from 1617 until 1836, was, was part of the parish of San Nicolas. At the same time, San Nicolas during that time was still a separate pueblo. So in 1734, the Augustinian order and the governor of Cebu, Don Martin Castañares, uh, decided to decided to division the problems existing during the time. O sa may problema nga existing, ang mga lumad nga mga taga Talisay, di man sila mudawat nga ang Talisay gipanagiyan na sa mga Agustinian. So and because of that, the governor of Cebu decided to demarcate the boundary between Cebu City and Talisay City. What is that demarcation in Talisay and Cebu City that divide between Talisay and Cebu City? Bulacao. There are two Bulacaos in Cebu. Bulacao, Cebu City. And there is also another Bulacao, Talisay City. What divided them was, what divided them is the river, Bulacao River, nga money nag-divide between Talisay City and Bulacao, Talisay and Bulacao, Cebu. And that was divided during the time of Governor Martin Castañas in 1734. In order for the, in order for the Agustinian nga, ang mga taga-talisa ay dili na mga hilabot. So, in 1827, the friars decided to open the haciendas for inquilinoship or for the renter. Many principales in the ciudad such as the Sansons, the Velosos, and the Osminias began to have access to the lands in Talisay and in Minglanilla. Then, in 1834, the town of Talisay was founded by the Augustinians Three years before, in 1831, the friars introduced sugar cane in the town. So what was the reason why the, what was the reason then why the friars decided to introduce sugar cane in Talisay? Because of the sugar booming in the world market, particularly, the, particularly during the 18th century. Then in 1836, two years later, the same friars founded the parish of Talisay, which was dedicated to Santa Teresa de Avila. So this one. Sad to say, the convent and the uh, Coralstone perimeter, it was destroyed during the bombing of 1945. So what, uh, what remains of the, uh, what remains of once the grandest um, Augustinian church outside of San Nicolas, the parish of Santa Teresa, what remained was the facade of the original grandeur. Next, sir. Um, see? Then, in 1831, as the demand of the sugar industry in the world market was booming, the friars decided to introduce sugar cane in the town again. Four barriers were required to be planted by sugar cane alone, namely, Poblacion, Dumlog, San Isidro, and Tabunok. This land, I mean, this barrios belongs to the flatlands of Talisay. So, like, for example, if you will, uh, if you enter Talisay, Wagi mog tabunok, wagi mog san isidro, wagi mog dumlog, wagi mog poblacion. And these areas were considered as the best suitable place or lands for sugar cane. Mauna ang ang word nga tabunok, which means arable land, or tambok, tabunokon. Then, uh, as the friars were prof uh, profiting for this type of agriculture, the old dog, or monitawag sa mga friars, decided to monopolize the sugar industry, not only in Talisay, but also the town south of Cebu. So you try to imagine, as early, I mean, you try to imagine that during the Spanish period, ang mga pari, negosyante na dyan yung dako. Ang ilang negosyante, ilang negosyo, di lang simbahan, di lang simbahan naman, sorry. Di lang skilan, but they also involved in sugar business and land ownership. Yeah, actually, according to the Code of Canon Law, I mean, according to the Code of Canon Law, priests are not allowed to engage business. Then, in 1880, the Santo Nino Corporation, which was the Basilica, the corporation managed and owned the Hacienda de Talisa in Minglanilla, built the first modern sugar mill plant in Old Dog Poblacion near the parish church and convent. What was the reason? Because they want to monopolize 
the sugar industry in Cebu. Thus, the parish priest sometimes acted as the manager of the corporation. Ang pari, di lang siya pari, manager pa dyan siya sa corporation. Then, on April 2, 1898, the revolutionaries rose up against the Agosinian friars in Talisay because of the issues revolving around lands allegedly stolen from them. So, in 1898, this is the most important events in the history of the revolutions in Cebu. Because one of the important reasons why the Cebuanos or the revolutionaries revolted against the Spaniards was because of the agrarian issues. It was found out It was found out in the legal documents nga, dili mo nita ng yuta, ipanag sa mga Agustinian. Mura bitaw siya, ang yung story, mura story ni Jose Rizal, iba pamilya, no? That the Dominicans were not really the, were not really the owners of the Calambashenda, but rather it was allegedly stolen from them. Then after a consolidated but short-lived independence, the Tilisainons in Quilinos began to consolidate their ownership to the lands they told. However, during the American period, the Spanish friars were allowed to go back to their mission areas but not to their former parishes. Pero bright kayo ang mga pari. Kini mga pari, di ni sila mailan. Because as early as 1897, the friars in Cebu were already anticipated. Anticipated with the revolutions. Revolutions happened in 1896. Pag 1897, ang mga friars, kaibawan na sila. Now, uh, any time of the day, revolutions will erupt. So what, what did the um, friars do during the time? Ilang giprinda ang mga yuta. Ilang giprinda ang mga yuta, particularly ni Otto Koch, one of the uh, German landowners and businessmen in Cebu during the time. So when the Inquilinos began to toll their lands and they were expecting, uh, Oy, wala naman na mga pare, wala naman na mga Spaniel, these lands belongs to us now. But in reality, when the friars uh, uh, came back, Loi taon kayo, gipangkuha ang mga yuta. And in fact, in 1905, there, in 1905, there was a litig litigation between the former mayor of Talisa during the time, si Dona Barquez and the Agustinian concerning the land ownership of the uh, land ownership of, of the former Hacienda de Talisa. But technically, what did the insul insular government during the time is that, was that para maseto lang isyo, Gibaligya nil agi palit sa insular government ang mga yuta o gihinahinay o hatag na sa mga inquilinos. Then during the American period, during the American period, Talisa experienced a rapid development in terms of agricultural endeavor. As the demands of sugar industry before the Great Dep Depression soared globally. So the Teos and San company, the same company who built the Bumedco, are you familiar with Bumedco? The Midilien, the Bugo Midilien, Um, sugar company, na pa magani na ang ilang kuwanon, it's still existing. The same company built the Talisay Sugar Central Mill in Talisay and it was considered as the greatest achievement of Talisay because the mill can now produce and process a large volume of sugar, sugar cane plant within the southern area of Cebu. So during this time also, tenants and landowners began to plant cash crops based on their own likings. It will, as long as it will produce money, because during the time of the Spaniards, you're allowed to rent lands, but it will be up to them. Kung usang klase nga tanong mangi mong itanong, particularly sugar cane, but this time they began to plant different types of crops, particularly bananas. That is why, kung wato mo og tabunok, there was uh, there was a sitio in tabunok that was called kasagingan. Asa man ang kasagingan, kanang G-tabs, gisano tabunok, that was a former sitio kasagingan. So it was said that almost all houses in this barangays were surrounded by sugar plants, tubo, and banana plants or saba. Among the famous small intosans in San Isidro were owned by the former president of the municipal, the Diparinis, the Morelios, the Bacos, the Lastimosas, the Laroas, and in Dumlog we have the Villaver, the Rigner, the Bilieza. And did you know that the Sisters of Mary was a former sugar cane plantations owned by the Borromeos, by the Garces, the Borromeos, by the Garces, and the Cabreras. However, what destroyed uh, what destroy slowly the sugar industry in Tal Talisay was the Great Depression. Because in 1927, the operation of Talisay Sugar Central was reduced to 20% of the working capacity because of the downfall of sugar revenues. 
This was also experienced by many of the Talisainans who were engaging in sugar business and they began to transform their lands into a more applicable cash crops. A misfortune destroyed the icon of industry in Talisay when in 1993, the Talisay Sugar Central was accidentally burned. It was said that the mail was purposely, uh, purposely burned so that corporation could, go, could get money from the insurance company. But during the Second World War, this was the second to the final stage of the destruction of the sugar industry in Talisay. Talisay was garrisoned by the Japanese as early as 1942 until the town's liberation in 1945. As Talisay was occupied by the Japanese, a large number of sugarcane plantations were burned by the Japanese imperial forces in San Isidro and Dumlog. Nga naman, because during that time, ang mga guerrillas, banago sila sa katuban. Ang tactic mga ng guerrilla mga is that hit and run style. Guerrilla, they, uh, they will not meet uh, their forces in a more professional way. Hit and run. So, like for example, some of the soldiers that were assigned in Talisay, mga giyog sa Nisidro, ilang ipagambos. As an retaliation, gipang sunog sa mga Japanese ang mga uh, sugar uh, plantations from Tabunok, San Isidro, and Dumlog. At the same time, banana plantation also in Tabunok were not spared as was hastily cut off by the raiding Japanese forces after the, after the massacre the inhabitants of the area. Then, however, the liberation of Talisa in 1945 destroyed almost 80%. Uh, next, go on, sir. Next. Next. So this one is the uh, aerial photo of Talisay after the liberation. It was said that 80% of the agricultural lands and properties in Talisay as the American forces bombed all the flatlands of Talisay. So it was said that it took them around five years before they can utilize sa mga yuta because kisa mong tayo magdaro diya nga dapat man ay bumba ang uban wak man na In fact, last 2000, last 2020 when when the Talisay Liberation Park was been uh, was been beautified by the city uh, by the city gov city government of Talisay, the construction uh, I mean the construction workers found uh, found out nga dapat din mga tulo ka buok bumba nga wala na buto sa kuan sa area sa Liberation Park. So that is also one of the reason why after the war wala kaayo mo click uh, wala kaayo magamit ang yuta. So karon is what is then the, how, how come then that the Consilva became one of the important um, snacks or pastime food of the Talisainon? Unknowingly to the majority of Talisainon, there was once a famous snack that was, also, that was almost eaten by all folks of life in the town because of the abundance of tubo and saging. So for example, if you will go to Talisay, inyora ng kitkito ng tubo. So, with the presence of the sugar cane and bananas in most of the lands in Talisay, it was then fitting that food snacks were invented and discovered from what the environment can provide. Since tubo or sugar cane was available, Talisaynons began to use the excess of the sugar plants. Sugar tidbits and sugar tarts were made from a raw sugar plants after the plants were processed from into sun sugar meals. After the process was done, a crystalline sugar was then produced. Muna ng gawas ng mga kinugay. Mas nindo to ang kinugay yung moskobado kung Lingin siya, kagikan daw na siya sa mga kulihan or mga singot sa mga trabahante. So, one of the important products of Intosan in Talisay was conselva or conserva in Spanish. This type of snacks dipped into boiling sugar caramel was invented out of the necessary ingredients that can be found in the surrounding of Talisay. Sugar cane and banana fruits were endemic in Talisay because of the presence of asindas in Tabunok and San Isidro. So again, I would like to reiterate ha, Consilva, conserva is not originally from Talisay. Almost all provinces in the Philippines nga naa sila sugarcane, naa sila ikaw nilang consilva or conserva. Thank you.